So we are now going to try and actually do the more full version of the rules of differentiation. And we're going to start to learn to differentiate combinations of functions. Because so far, we only know how to differentiate things, basic functions with just a, a simple power, sine, cos, ln, and exponential functions. But we want to be able to do things that look like this. So the first thing we're going to be looking at, which is going to be our focus for the whole of today's lesson, are composite functions. Composite functions are where you have a function inside another function, which you studied with me in chapter two, I think it is. And in this particular case we've got here, this is a composite function because there's an inside function, which is 1 plus 3x, and an outside function, which is square rooting. So I've said here that the outer function here is the square root, and the inner function is 1 plus 3x. So really, f of x is root x, and g of x is 1 plus 3x. And it's a composite function because you've put this g of x function inside f of x. The way that you differentiate composite functions is something which is called the chain rule from exercise 9c, and we're going to be using the chain rule for the whole of today's lesson. That's going to be the focus. You can then come up with things that are products of two functions. You know the products of two functions. Product just means that two things have been multiplied together here. So here you can clearly see the two functions are x and sine 2x. Sine 2x happens also to be a composite function because there is a 2x function inside the sine function. And then the last type of thing, sorry, I should have said, if there's a product of two functions, surprise, you use the product rule. If you have a division of two functions, which is actually called a quotient, um, you can have something like this. You use something that's called the quotient rule to be able to differentiate those kinds of things. And that pretty much will tick off everything about differentiation. I can't really think of any other kinds of functions that we won't, then won't be able to differentiate. That kind of covers pretty much all the types of stuff that we know about. So on this next page here, I've got a few different kinds of functions. And what I would like for you to try and do is to explain to the person next to you, and then we're going to speak about them as a class, um, what these functions are actually like. So some of them may be composite functions. Remember, a composite function is like a function that is inside a function. So if I was going to give an example of a composite function, I would talk about this red one that I've got up here, because I have the inside function is 4x plus 3, and the outside function is to the power of 4. So there's two functions that are going on there. We're going to talk about multiplying it by 4 and adding 3. That's the inside function and raising it to the power of 4. And then I want to see are there any of these ones that are the products of functions. So this pink one that I've got here, y equals x e to the x, is a product of two functions because clearly x is being multiplied by e to the x. And then some of these may be a little bit more complicated. They may be products, but they may also have composite functions in as well. So you don't need to answer anything in particular here. I just want you to kind of talk through the functions and see if you can describe them in that language. And I should hear you talking to each other about what you think they all are like. And we'll just do a couple of minutes talking about them, and then we'll come back together to see if we can work out um, what they're like.
Okay, just 30 seconds more to see if you can uh, categorize these ones that we've got. Okay, so uh, we'll just kind of talk through them one by one. I heard a few comments of people saying, well, there's a lot of composite functions here, and I agree there's probably quite a lot of composite. We've already talked about this first one that's in red, and we said it's a composite function. There's definitely no product there. What about this g of x equals 2x plus 1 sine x? Product. It's the product of two functions. We've got a sine x and a 2x plus 1. That would require the product rule. Um, Arifal, what about this green one that I've got here? It's a composite function. Yeah, what are the two functions? What's the inside and what's the outside? Yeah, and then the root function is the outside function. Remember when we do differentiation, we don't really use roots. We would usually replace the root with what? A half. We'd change it to the power of a half. And that's still going to be true when we go forward with this as well. Um, what about this one here, do you think, Faisal? Do you think this is, uh, is there a product in there? Is it composite? It's a combination, yeah. I think it's a, combina a composite function, but there's also a product as well. What are the two functions that are being multiplied? Um, yep. Terminal yeah, good. So we've got the two functions there as a product. I guess we could also see if we, if we wanted to, we could see that this is a composite function as well because you've got a function of x squared plus x inside another function. But overall, it's a product. Um, what about this one here, Arisa, the blue one? A product, yeah, it's a product. And what about this second one that I've got here? It's, pardon? It's also a product as well. We've got three sine x being multiplied by cos x. We've got a couple of product ones here. Um, Ishak, what about this, this dark red one? So there's some of it's a composite function because I've got uh, something inside here and then squaring it. There's a combination of them because I've got this bit being multiplied by this bit here. We said the pink one was a product of two functions. Shaham, what about this f of y is e to the y squared? Uh, yeah, it's a composite function. What's the inside and what's the outside function? Ah, I think you've misinterpreted. When we have this bit, I would have to have brackets around the e to the y if the whole thing was being squared. So what do you think is actually happening first? The y squared is happening, and then it's being e to the power. So the inside function is y squared. The outside function is the e to the power, because the squared is applying to the y rather than to the whole expression. Um, what about g of y equals sine of 3, y to the power of 6? Amina, what do you think for that uh, pale blue one over there? Um, yeah, it's a composite function. What's the inside function? Good, and then the outside is the sine function that we've got down there. And then last of all, h to the y, uh, sorry, not h to the y, h of y, this function that we've got here. Ishraq, what do you think this one is, composite or product? Composite, inside function? Good, outside function? Cube root, and cube root we represent as the third, okay, to the power of the third. So we're going to now have a look at the chain rule. We are going to do something with the chain rule that I will probably do once. I may do it again if we have a very hard question in the future. And then we will completely abandon this method and we will use a method that I prefer the whole time. When you look in Solution Bank for these solutions, they will not use my method. They will do this long, full method, and it will look quite complicated. So I'm going to show you this because it's important to understand why this method actually works. And then we're going to try and do it with a shortcut method that is the really the only way to achieve the top grades in this A-level. You have to be able to do this in a slightly quicker kind of way. So I've said here that the chain rule allows us to differentiate a composite function, i.e. a function within a function. So the function that I've got here is uh, 3x to the power of 4 plus x, all to the power of 5. And you can see that there's an inside function, and then the outside function is to the power of 5. Now, the chain rule is this thing that I've got written here. It says that dy by dx is the same as dy by du multiplied by du by dx. And you're probably thinking, OK, where is this u coming from? 
and I'm going to show that in just a second. But the main thing I want us to notice from this rule that we've got written here is we're going to notice how the DUs sort of cancel out on the top and the bottom on the right hand side. So this isn't really a proof of the chain rule, but the Ds sort of behave as quantities which can often be manipulated in this way. So you can imagine them behaving like fractions. They're not fractions, but they behave a little bit in that way that dy by dx is the same as this because the du's effectively cancel each other out. Okay, so we're going to use that when we do this full method that we've got here. So for this thing that I've got, I am going to let the inside function be represented by the letter u. Okay, so I'm going to let the inside function be represented by u. And the inside function in this case is 3x to the 4 plus x. Which means that the overall function can be written in terms of u as what? u to the power of 5. Because I've now just said, well, I don't want to write this thing in here that's a bit long to write. I'm just going to simplify. I'm just going to call that inside function u to the power of 5. But notice here that u is a function of x. It's the inside function. Technically, I should probably write u is a function of x like this, but we don't because it just gets cumbersome and it gets in the way of doing all of our calculations. So we're just going to write u equals. Now, the chain rule says if I want to find out what dy by dx is, I will do dy du and I will multiply it by du dx. What this means is you're going to take what y is and you're going to differentiate it with respect to u. So you're going to concentrate on the one that is in terms of u. So if I look at this here, if I differentiate this with respect to u, y will become dy du. What would this differentiate to with respect to u? 5u to the 4. I've pulled the power down and I've reduced the power down by 1. And the other thing I want to find out is du dx. So that means take u and differentiate it with respect to x. That means concentrate on the x variable when you're differentiating this. So underneath here, I'm going to say that du by dx is equal to the derivative of this thing that I've got. Taylor, what would this differentiate to? 3x to the 4 plus x. Um, 12x cubed. Yep. Good. 12x cubed plus 1. So what we've done, essentially, is we've differentiated the inside function, and we've differentiated the overall outside function. And now we're going to put them back together to find out what dy by dx is. So dy by dx is dy by du which is 5u to the 4. And I'm going to multiply it by du by dx, which is 12x cubed plus 1. And obviously, I'm going to have to bracket that so that I'm showing that I'm multiplying it by the whole thing that I've got there. Why am I unhappy to leave this as my answer? It's got u with it, OK? It's still got u with it. And clearly, when we're talking about dy by dx, if the whole thing is in terms of x, then the whole thing down here should be in terms of x. But that's not a problem, because earlier on, I said what u was equal to. So I can replace it and say that it is 5 u to the power of 4. This is u to the power of 4. And then I have 12x cubed plus 1. So we're going to try and see if we can spot what has actually happened here. I think if I showed you this when you were doing differentiation, the first when you first saw differentiation, you wouldn't have thought, oh, I'll do binomial and I'll expand this whole thing out here. I think what you would have done if you first saw this is I think you would have come up with this. 
I think you would have said, cool, I'm just going to pull the power down and I'm going to reduce the power down by one, which is great because that's what we would expect it to differentiate to. But we have this extra bit on the end here, and this extra bit on the end here is what relative to this thing here? How is this orange thing related to the starting thing? It's the bracket differentiated. It's the thing that we were saying to the power of five differentiated. So I think we're going to be able to develop a bit of a shortcut with this. Because to me, it looks like you differentiate it how you would expect. And then you multiply by the derivative of the, the thing that was inside. And the thing that goes inside, this 3x to the 4 plus x, this u thing, I don't call it a thing. I call it a blah. Because the blah can be absolutely anything. It just, I don't care what it is. Whatever that thing is, I'm going to call it blah. We're going to differentiate blah how we would expect it to go, and then we're going to multiply it by the derivative of that thing, of that blah. So we're going to write that now on the next page with exactly the same thing, the exact same question that we've got here, and it's the blah method. So you want to differentiate the inner and outer functions? You differentiate the inner and outer functions, and you multiply them together. That's it. So doing it mentally in one go, aka the blah method, what you do is you differentiate the blah to the power of 5, as you would expect. But also multiply by the derivative of blah. And I'm going to show the derivative of blah to save me writing the derivative of blah as blah dash, because you know the dash when you have like f of x and you have f dash x, the dash means it's been differentiated. So this thing here is the derivative of blah. So we're going to try and do this now mentally in one go. If y is this thing that we've got here, so effectively what we're saying is we've got blah to the power of 5. Well, to differentiate blah to the power of 5, I would have 5 blah to the power of 4. And I'm now going to multiply it by the derivative of blah, which is 12x cubed plus 1. One line of working. And this chain rule will work again and again and again, no matter what the situation is. As long as we know how the outside function differentiates and how the inside function differentiates, we can put them together with the chain rule. And this is because this first bit is dy by du, and this second bit is du by dx. D the du's cancel, and effectively what you end up with is du by dx.